abortion, premarital sex, unwarranted divorces, adultery, pornography, sexting. What is this all about? We're going to talk about it today. Even homosexual relationships, uh, homosexual marriage. What is going on in our society on this episode of Hours of Revival? Aim. Shoot. Welcome to Arrows of Revival. God wants to use you as an arrow in his revival. And he's releasing arrows across the world for a world revival. Tune in as we discuss these arrows. Greetings. This is Bishop Reed here with another episode of Arrows of Revival. And uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about sexual idolatry. Yes, we're going to be talking about sexual idolatry. In fact, sexual idolatry is at the heart of many of the wickedness in modern society. Frequently throughout the Bible, idolatry is linked with sexual immorality. And sexual immorality leads often to idolatry. Because sexual immorality is actually a form of idolatry. Likewise, idolatry often leads to sexual immorality. The Lord has revealed to me that the Christian church in America must ensure that they stand wholeheartedly against sexual sin, even when the person in the White House may seem to be a friend of the church. We got to ensure that even when the person in the White House may seem to be a friend of the church, that even when that person in the White House uh, is standing for sexual immorality in some fashion, the church must ensure that it's standing wholeheartedly against sexual immorality. And we remind you of David, King David, King of Israel, that when he committed adultery, even though David was known of the, as a man after God's own heart, even though David was one of, the, one of the greatest kings of Israel, even though David had won so many wars, that when David committed adultery, God sent the prophet Nathan to rebuke him for his sins. And not only that, but David experienced consequences for that sin of adultery he has done. And so the church in America... And the church across the world must ensure that we are standing strictly wholeheartedly against sexual immorality. I'll tell you, sexual idolatry has taken over Western society. The mass abortion that you see, the unwarranted number of divorces, the, the pornography is so uh, rampant. And even the feminist movement and even the fallout that you see from the Me Too movement, you know, the Me Too movement, which have been taking place where women have been coming out and, and exposing uh, men in reputation who in the past perhaps sexually abused them or something of that sort. Uh, and the Me, the Me Too movement, the, the fallout from the Me Too movement is also a result or can be traced back to the sexual revolution of the 1960s that took place uh, in Western society really have spread around the world. And uh, this is a form of sexual uh, idolatry. I tell you, um, in the 1960s, Push, push first by uh, the entertainment industry. Uh, and then you had introduction of uh, the magazine, the Playboy magazines, and the entertainment history, industry began to push uh, this sexual revolution for people to look at uh, sexual interaction as something just private between them and the other person and not something that they need to feel guilty or ashamed of. And so many people began to explore sexuality uh, out of what they used to before. In, in, in the United States, in the night up to the 1950s, traditional marriage was commonplace. Most people thought it was wrong to get involved in sexual promiscuity. 
most people look at it as shameful uh, to get involved in, in sexual uh, immorality. But as the sexual revolution took place, that attitude began to change among people. Uh, marriages, so people started to get married later, and uh, a lot of sexual sin began to increase. And this came about because uh, of uh, Sigmund Freud uh, promoted the idea that sexual, when when that that sexual repression can actually lead to men, um, mental illness, and because of that idea, it began to be pushed push first by the, 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 as I said, first by the entertainment industry, but in the many different arenas, they start to be pushed and there became an increase in sexual activity around the 1960s and onward in America and spreading throughout the Western society and ultimately the world. The consequences of the sexual revolution have been devastating. As I said, now we have mass abortion and um, divorces are much more on the rise. Pornography has increased. Uh, there's a, a massive feminist movement that is anti-marriage. And and as I said, the fallout from the Me Too, Me Too movement with all these accusations of, of, of men that have been abusive, sexually abusive in the past, is, is a result of the sexual revolution. And I'm saying that all to say that in our current society, there is a massive sin of sexual idolatry that is taking place. And as I've mentioned, you can see sexual idolatry, you can see it manifested in many different ways in our society. In unwarranted divorces, the divorce rate as divorce rate has more than doubled around the world over the fa- the past four decades. So over the, f- the past four decades, uh, divorces have rapidly increased. So you, you're talking about from the the seventies, the eighties to now, there's been a massive increase in unwarranted divorces around the world. It has more than doubled, more than doubled around the world. Not only unwarranted divorces is a manifestation of sexual idolatry, but adultery itself. Adultery has increased around the world, both in occurrence and visibility. You're seeing a lot more celebrities. You're seeing a lot more um, politicians involved in adultery and and even sadly to say even in the church you're finding more uh church leaders involved in adultery so adultery has increased around the world uh in its visibility in how much it's been seen and in, in its occurrence fornication which is a uh, premarital sex a study of about three-fourths of the three-fourths of the world so a study of about three-fourths of the world found that a majority a, a majority thought of premarital sex as acceptable. So let me say that again. A study of about three-fourths of the world found that a majority considers premarital sex as acceptable. Only about 46% found it morally unacceptable. In the United States alone, at the start of the 20th century, almost 100% found premarital sex as morally, uh, as more, uh, well, let me repeat that. Uh, at the start of the 20th century in the United States, most people thought that premarital sex was wrong. Most people thought that premarital sex was morally unacceptable. But now... This has dropped to about 70%. It dropped to about... So, at the start of the 20th century, that's uh, early 1900s, um, it, it was thought that premarital sex, fornication, was wrong. It was not a morally correct thing to do. That percent dropped to about 70% in the middle of the century. So, around 1950s, about 70% of those in the United States thought that uh, premarital sex was wrong. And then by the 1970s, that number dropped to 40%. So by the 1970s, 
only about 40% of the population in the United States thought that fornication or premarital sex was wrong. Today, that percent is at 25%. So we're talking about from the start of the 20th century, you know, in the early 1900s to now, uh, to, we're in the 2000s. Now we're in the 21st century. It has dropped to 25%. Only 25% of the population in the United States thinks something is wrong with premarital sex. Only 20 25% of the population in the United States sees fornication as wrong, as a sin. Yeah. So this is the sexual idolatry taking place. You have unwarranted divorces, adultery, fornication. I could go further. Same-sex marriage. Over two dozen countries allow same-sex marriage today. These, these two dozen countries that allow same-sex marriage today, they, they, they began to allow that at this, around the start of the 21st century. As a matter, as a, a matter of fact, I believe the Netherlands was one of the first countries. It was in the early 2000, around 2001 to 2003. Around that time, was the first country to legalize same-sex marriage, and now it's it's about 24 countries that have legalized same-sex marriage. So you see, the sexual idolatry is increasing. Pornography is another manifestation of sexual idolatry. As of 2018, there were 26 million porn websites so we're talking about from last year this is come from last year maybe more by now 26 million porn websites that amounts to about 3 billion 3 billion with a b porn web pages on on just a single website just a single website this is just one porn website that I'm talking about, over 91 and a half billion with a B porn videos were viewed in 2017. So on one website, on one porn website alone, listen, only on one porn website, 91 and a half billion, billion with a B porn web pages were viewed in 2017. Pornography is not a manifestation of sexual idolatry. Abortion. Abortion is another manifestation of sexual idolatry. Now, sometimes in a society, abortion activists would want you to believe that women who are going for the abortion, they're doing it because of health issues or they're doing it because uh, of a possibility there was rape or things of that sort. And they want you to believe that's the majority. But the fact is that a majority of people that are getting abortion, a majority of them are doing it because they had an unwanted pregnancy, because they were sexually active. Uh, they were sexually active and they got pregnant and they, they, they want to abort that child because they did not plan for that pregnancy. That's the majority of those that are getting abortion. More than 50 billion, 50 million with an M, more than 50 million abortions occurred worldwide between the period of 2010 and 2014. This is according to the World, World Health Organization. Over 50 million abortions occurred worldwide from between 2010 and 2014. Other manifestation of sexual immorality, sexual entertainment. Yeah, sexual entertainment. We're talking about it's now a lot of sexual activity in movies, sexual activity in shows. I mean, it is so grieving to my spirit that it's so difficult, it's so hard uh, to turn on the TV to, to watch a show, a sitcom, uh, or some uh, a series, a drama series on TV without there being a homosexual couple or a homosexual behavior being displayed. It's even in the cartoons now where they're having those things displayed and, and there's such a massive amount of uh, sexuality being shown 
on TV and in movies. And let me share this with you concerning sexual entertainment. According to a study by psychologists at Dartmouth University conducted in 2012, children that are exposed to sexual content in films tend to have sex at a younger age and treat sex more casually. Now, this is the part I want you to hear other than the, I mean, the part with the effect on children that's important in children. It, it, it's these researchers at Dartmouth University found through their study that children exposed to sexual content in films tend to have sex at a younger age and tend to treat sex in a more casual fashion. But here's what the researchers found. And I quote, researchers found that 68% of G-rated, G-rated shows, G-rated films, (laughs) 68% of G-rated films had sexual content. G-rated films. 82% of PG-rated films had sexual content. And 85% of PG-13 rated movies had sexual content. And they were looking at about 684 movies that were included in the study. And they found in that 684 movie that 68% of G-rated, G-rated. When, when we as parents hear that a show or a film or a movie is G-rated, we're thinking it's safe for our children to watch. But this study of about 684 movies found that 68%, that's more than half, more than half of the G-rated movies included sexual content. Huh? 82% of PG. When you hear of a PG movie, you're thinking that's okay for your kids to watch. 82% of PG-rated movies had sexual content. And 85% of PG-13 movies. I'm saying that to say that sexual idolatry is so rampant that even in the most innocent type of movies that we would think there's sexual content there. Sex, sex, uh, I'm I'm finding it hard to say this. Sexting, sexting, you know, texting, uh, you know, texting sexual images, um, texting sexual videos and such the like uh, through a mobile phone. Uh, sexting uh, as rapidly increased is another manifestation of sexual idolatry. One study found that about 50%, 50% of adults have used their mobile device to either send or receive uh, uh, intimate content, intimate sexual content. Yes. And, 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 and among that 50%, yeah, I think of about 16% of those adults sent it to a stranger. Or receive from a stranger. So, so sexting doesn't mean, talking about among adults now, 50% of adults use their mobile device to either send or receive intimate sexual content. Another study by the American Psychological Association conducted in 2015, in that study, researchers found that 88% of participants reported ever having sexted and 82% reported that they had sex sexted in the past year. Nearly 75% said they sex they sexted in the in the context of a committed relationship and 43% said they sexted as part of a casual relationship. So I mean among that 75% that said that they sexted in the context of a committed relationship, we can assume that some of those may be married. But 43%, 43% said they sexted as part of a casual relationship. But we are talking here about sexual idolatry. Sexual idolatry. Now, if you clicked on this podcast, or you, you see this topic on Facebook, you're going to see the topic. Uh, it's all about sex. It's all about sex with a question mark. Yeah. It's all about sex. So, Things like abortion, same-sex marriages, unwarranted divorces, adultery, fornication, uh, sexual entertainment, sexting. Yeah, it's all about sex. Is it really all about sex? Yes, 
What's happening here is sex, but it, it, it's, it springs from idolatry. It springs from not submitting to God. Now, let me tell you some, there's a, a couple of things more regarding this. First of all, I want you to know, idolatry leads to sexual immorality. Let me say it again. Idolatry leads to sexual immorality. Idolatry, what I mean by idolatry is worshiping other gods. What I mean by idolatry is submitting to someone else or something else other than the true and living God. And it, it doesn't mean worshiping, just worshiping idols, like worshiping other gods or being in another religion other than serving Jesus Christ. But idolatry can can also be you're worshiping yourself. You can also look into yourself and exalting yourself above God can also be a form of idolatry. Other forms of idolatry include looking to spirits, looking into, um, you know, like looking, trying to get information from spirits, like through a psychic, like through palm reading, like through uh, trying to connect with the spirit world by speaking to the dead, through witchcraft, even forms of uh, different forms of yoga, uh, where where people are trying, you know, to to connect with the spirit world. This, these are all forms of idolatry. And here's the thing about idolatry. Here's the thing about when you submit yourself to another and not to God. Idolatry leads to sexual immorality. Is it all about sex? Idolatry leads to sexual immorality. In other words, when men do not submit to God, when men do not submit to worshiping God, it leads to sexual immorality. Now, this is a theme that you'll see all through the Bible. You'll see in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Bible from Genesis to Malachi, that any time the people of Israel, the children of Israel rebelled against God and began to serve idols. They, when they turned their hearts away from the Lord and would turn their hearts toward the idols, the idolatry always led them into sexual immorality. Matter of fact, let me give you the scripture. It's in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 12. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. It says this, My people ask counsel at their stocks. And their staff declare it unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms had caused them to err, and they have gone a warring from under their God. So here Hosea is speaking or prophesying concerning the children of Israel, saying that my people, God is speaking through the prophet, said my people ask counsel at their stocks. The stocks, uh, the, these are their idols. These are like the stocks of trees. Uh, these are the trees that they took and make into their idols. So the, the, the people of Israel were seeking idols made from other trees, idols made from wood, seeking counsel from them, seeking uh, uh, direction from these false gods. And it says their staff declared unto them, meaning that they, they were receiving direction from these false gods. And then the scripture says, for the spirit of war them that caused them to err. So here the Bible describes idolatry as a form of whoredom. Whoredom is a, a harlotry, prostitution. So here the Bible is, is calling idolatry as a form of prostituting yourself. He said, for the spirit of war them that caused them to err, and they have gone a warring from under their God. They were being unfaithful to God. They were committing adultery. They were giving themselves over to prostitution, to false gods, the spirit of wardoms. The spirit of wardoms does not just cause idolatry. The spirit of wardoms cause sexual immorality. Now, the Bible goes further in Hosea 4 verse 13. So we just read Hosea 4 verse 12. Now, Hosea 4 verse 13 says this. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. So here it is. 
the children of Israel, they were sacrificing on top of the mountains. In other words, they were going up into the mountains and into the hills uh, so that they can worship their idols. This was a common practice in those ancient times where people would have altars to their gods on the hills and mountains. And here the children of Israel was also practicing this. They were going up to the mountains and the hills to sacrifice unto their gods. Yeah. And here's what it caused. It says, therefore, your daughter shall commit whoredom, prostitution, harlotry, adultery. That's what that whoredom means. Therefore, your daughter shall commit whoredom and your spouse shall commit adultery. This part is not talking about spiritual adultery. It's talking about actual physical adultery. Because the children of Israel was seeking after other gods, God prophesied and said, well, because you're seeking after other gods, your children, your generation, your husbands, your wives will go into adultery, will go into sexual deviancy and sin. Idolatry leads to sexual immorality. That's why you got to be careful. If you're giving your heart over to seeking demonic spirits. What do I mean by that? Like going to the psychics, depending on horoscope and astrology and uh, the, depending on things like palm reading and getting involved in things that are associated with witchcraft and voodoo and uh, things like the Ouija board and such the like. If you're opening up yourself to these things, you are opening your life to sexual immorality. You wonder why you can't resist sexual sin. You, you, you may wonder why uh, your family seem to be filled with sexual immorality because idolatry leads to sexual immorality. And so much of the sexual immorality you're seeing in society today is because of idolatry. Now, here's the other part of it. So idolatry leads to sexual immorality. But here's the other part. Sexual immorality leads to spiritual idolatry. Now, why is this? Because the spirit of whoredoms, a spirit of harlotry, a spirit of prostitution, the same spirit that causes idolatry is the same spirit that causes sexual immorality. Sexual immorality leads to spiritual idolatry. Now, I have a very good example in the word of God in Numbers chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. Now, let me give it a background in Numbers 25, 1 and 2. So, the, the king of Moab, whose name was uh, Balak, wanted to curse the children of Israel. The children of Israel were marching through the wilderness, and they wanted to pass through Moab. And uh, the, king of, the king of Moab, Balak, he was concerned that the children of Israel would attack his land, and so he wanted them to be cursed. And so he called upon a prophet in the land whose name was Balaam. And I said to Balaam, I'll, I'll give you whatever you want. Uh, I'll give you all the money you want or the honor you want. All you have to do is curse these people, curse the people of Israel. Well, God would not allow that, that, that prophet, Balaam, to curse the people of Israel. And no matter how much Balaam, the king of Moab, acts, Balaam would not curse the children of Israel. In, in fact, Balaam instead blessed the, the people of Israel. However, the Bible tells us that Balaam, the prophet, proceeded to advise the king, the king Balak, to get the people of Israel to prostitute themselves or to get involved sexually with the Moabite woman. And this may be a way, this may be a way to cause a curse to come among them. So, Balaam gave the king Balak this advice, you know, get the Moabite woman to uh, to sleep with the men of Israel and to invite them to worship the gods of the Moabites. And so in Numbers 25 verse 1, that's exactly what happened. The people, the men of Israel began to commit adultery with the women of Moab. And when they began to commit adultery with them and to sleep with them, those women began to invite those men to, 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 to eat the food that was sacrificed unto the Moabite idols and to bow down and worship these false gods. So here's the point I'm making. 
when those men of Israel got involved sexually in a sexual sin with the Moabite woman, it led them to them going into idolatry because sexual immorality leads to uh, uh, idolatry. So what you see happening in the land is that as there's an increase in sexual sin, uh, I mean, people, uh, there's more acceptance in the society of being involved sexually outside of marriage and with contraceptions available, many are taking the chance to get involved sexually outside of marriage. And as that takes place, it opens up their heart and it opens up the temptation to go towards false idols. One of the reasons why even in churches you're finding uh, more who are church attenders and more who are uh, Christians, you're finding that more people are getting involved in false doctrine. More people are believing the wrong things. Why? Because with the sexual activity in their life, they are looking for an appeasement for their sins. The sexual immorality leads to idolatry. Now, let me go into this. What is the divine intention for sex? What is the divine intention for sex? God's intention for sex was for the procreation of the creatures he made in his image. I'll say that again. God's intention for sex was for the reproduction of the creatures that he made in his image. Mankind was made in the image of God. Men are different from the animals. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that God made all the different animals after their kind, the beasts of the field after their kind, uh, the fishes after their kind, and so on and so forth. But when it came to man in Genesis chapter 1, and verse 26, he said, let us make man in, in, in our own image and after our own likeness. So God made man in his image. God made man after his likeness. And so man was unique. Mankind was created in God's image. This means that humans would have the ability to reason and to be rational. They would have the mind and ability to rule over God's creation. God that said to God said that, uh, let us make man our own image, our own likeness. And the, the scripture says, though so therefore God made man in his own image, in the image of God created he them, male and female created he them. And he said to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and of dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the cattle and over the land. So God, when, when the scripture says man is creating God's image, it means that man, human beings, would have the rationality, the, the, the sense of reasoning and the mind so that they can rule over God's creation. Woman, humankind was meant to be a reflection of God's glory. And when you look at a man, you would glorify God because you would see God's glory upon that man. The fact that man was creating God's image, as we can see, means that, that, that man would have language as a mean of communication. Even as God does things through words, he created the world world through the words of his mouth. Even so, man would have a language and be able to speak things, would be able to name things as Adam did in the garden in Genesis chapter 2. The animals, the animals, uh, animals even to today, no matter how a man may train an animal, an animal will not develop a whole system of language not in the sense that a man does. They may have different ways of communicating certain basic things, but as a whole system of language, the animals do not have that. But because man was creating God's image, the men have a, a sense of language and also a sense of hum morality. All humankind across all cultures have a sense of inner morality because they were made in the image of God. And so, God said to man, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God's intention, other uh, God's divine intention for sex is that man would, would procreate, man would reproduce people after their kind who are created in the image of God. And so that there'll be a population of creatures upon the earth who are reflecting God's glory. Yeah. 
But today we see that there's a, that uh, mankind have been debased. Uh, mankind is in a degenerate state because of sexual promiscuity, because of denial of man's uniqueness. Men are treated like beasts, like animals. There, there's a despising of the mandate that man was given to replenish the earth. Instead, uh, mankind want to look at sex as only something to enjoy physically in a, a fleshly desires for themselves and forget that sex was created for the reproduction of mankind after God's image. God created man in his image and as such, mankind is uniquely different from the animals in that man reflects God's glory. Mankind was endued with divine distinctions that when fully in manifestation and operation glorifies God. He created mankind both male and female. Therefore, both genders, male and female, are made in the image of God. The mandate of man was to be fruitful and to replenish the earth, meaning to reproduce children. Therefore, the push in society to remove gender distinctions is a denial of the image of God and ultimately a rejection of man's mandate to, to multiply and replenish the earth and to take dominion. This is the same with the homosexual agenda. In the homosexual agenda, in homosexual relationships, homosexual relationships deny the image of God. It denies the image of God and the mandate to procreate. Obviously, uh, two women or two men cannot bear children in a natural way. And so homosexual relationships deny God's mandate to the man and thus deny the image of God because God created man male and female. He created man male and female for them to be together for the purpose of reproducing people after the humankind that would reflect God's glory. So these things are uh, these gender, the, the destruction of the gender distinctions and uh, try to neutralize the gender and homosexual relationship, you know, this debases mankind to beasts. Man lives with a beastly nature when they deny the image of God and the mandate given to man. This denial of the image of God is rooted in idolatry. The denial of the image of God, that man was created in God's image. The denial of the image of God is rooted in idolatry. The refusal, idolatry is the refusal to acknowledge God as God. Because man do not acknowledge God for who he is, they also do not accept that they were made in his image. And the purpose they were made in his image so that through mankind, God may be glorified. Today, we see this manifested also in the dishonor of marriage. As marriage was instituted by God for the propagation of the humankind, the propagation of the creatures that were made in the image of God, and therefore the highest display of God's glory, the dishonor of marriage can be seen in the mass unwarranted divorces, that are taking place in the redefinition of marriage. You know, about 24 countries now have legalized same-sex marriage. They've, they've, they've redefined or they've tried to redefine what they think marriage is to be not only between a man and a woman, male and female, but between the same sex. The dishonor of marriage can also be seen in the blurring of the gender lines. These acts which are connected to and are rooted in sex are done in idolatry. So these acts, mass divorces, redefinition of marriage, the blurring of the gender lines, these acts are connected to or rooted in sex and are done in idolatry. The refusal to accept God as God and thus putting aside the image of God where man was created in God's image. It's a rejection of God's glory and it's an embrace of the beastly nature in man 
In other words, men are living like animals without the divine distinction that God has given them as creatures created in his image. Abortion also. Abortion also is seen, you can see abortion as one of the manifestation of this rejection of God's image and the, the dishonor of marriage because it rejects the mandate from the male and female to replenish the earth. The Bible says in Malachi 2.15, this is what God said concerning procreation, concerning reproducing children. He says in Malachi 2.15, And did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. So God's saying that I made the two one, male and female one. Why? That he may have a godly seed. And we are seeing the dishonor of marriage through the proliferation of fornication. There's a mass increase in premarital sex in fornication. You know, a lot of people now even find even those that are that attend church think there's nothing wrong with sex outside of marriage, nothing wrong with fornication. There's an increase in adultery. We see this honor of marriage in the rewriting of the marriage laws to allow for same-sex marriage. And, and unfortunately, we are seeing churches today that are accepting homosexual marriages and churches that are accepting clergy, ministers that are homosexuals. And these are the things that we see happening now. It's a dishonor of marriage. Here's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 from verse 2. The Pharisees came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Lord, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? And Jesus answered in Mark 10 verse 3. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Jesus answered, this is Mark 10, verse 5. Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, here it is, Mark 10, verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Verse 7. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Mark 10 verse 9, for what therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. But because of sexual idolatry, man is dishonoring, dishonoring the marriage union, rejecting the image of God, the distinctiveness in which man was created. And, and, and so they're really rejecting God's glory. Sexual idolatry is taking place on the land. Do not be trapped in the sexual idolatry that is taking over the land. There are churches, so-called churches, that have already been trapped in it. There are many believers that are embracing it. Some of these believers are even in uh, evangelical churches, churches that are preaching the truth. Some Christians sitting in the audience or church attenders sitting in the audience are still embracing this sexual idolatry taking over the land. Uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with premarital sex, nothing wrong with fornication and these types of things. And there's so much more that I need to say about this. We're going to have to continue this topic uh, later because we're going to get into some of the dangers of sexual immorality and how to escape this sex trap the sex trap of sexual idolatry. Let, let me tell you a couple of things more in God's intention concerning sex. God uses procreation. God uses procreation in his work of redemption and election. So the fact that God made male and female and his intention was in the bonds of marriage for mankind to reproduce, to reproduce uh, humankind, this, this, this creature that he created, this, this unique set of creatures that he created that would carry his image. God uses reproduction in his work of redemption. And this is a very important point to make here. Redemption came through the seed of a woman. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, through the seed of a woman. I, the Bible says in Genesis 3 verse 15, 
and I'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise is healed. So therefore, what we understand from that is that God used the fact that uh, men would reproduce children and have children. He used that knowing that there would be a seed that would come for the woman, that there would be uh, a generation, that there would be children of the woman. He used that and through that seed, he brought Christ into the world. Yes, he brought Christ into the world. So God used the reproduction um, to bring Christ into the world. Uh, another point could make with that is God's work of election, where he, God has pronounced and has spoken, for instance, to Israel, that Israel will be saved. Doesn't mean that all Israelites will be saved, but that God has a plan for Israel, the people of Israel, that among them, he would save a remnant. How will God do this? God will do this by leaving a seed. The Bible says in Romans 9 verse 29, uh, Paul is quoting the prophet Isaiah and said, And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and made like unto Gomorrah. In other words, Knowing that there would be the reproduction of people, knowing that there would be Israelites being born among each generation, God, by his election of grace, by his work of grace, God leaves a remnant in each generation among the children of Israel. Yes. Uh, and, and this is the thing. If you remember Moses, uh, Pharaoh was killing all the firstborn all the firstborn of the children of Israel. But the parents of Moses saw that he was a goodly child and hid him. And God used Moses, God used Moses as the deliverer of Israel. The same when Jesus Christ came into the world, Herod was trying to kill all the male, the male, the born males. He was trying to kill all of them. And God supernaturally preserved Christ by sending him to Egypt. Then he returned back to Nazareth after the threat was over. Why am I saying this? Because it shows the evil of abortion as it is a rejection of God's mandate, plan, and purpose in the earth. Yes. And why am I showing this? I'm showing this. I'm saying this. So this is God's intent for sex is for reproduction. But a reproduction of mankind were made in his image. But Satan hates this because... Satan doesn't want to see humankind on the earth, this set of creatures that are reflecting the glory of God. Even in the fallen state, these mankind have the potential to know God and to worship God and glorify God uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. And so the devil hates this about man and do anything to destroy man. And sexual immorality is a way to do it. But through sexual immorality, through the sexual idolatry upon the land, that's why we have mass abortions. Mass abortions are taking place because people want to have sex as they please without being in God's will. They want to freely have sex in a promiscuous way. And then when an unwanted pregnancy comes, they can abort that baby. Now, yes, there are situations where there's health or health risk to the mom where where the mother may may die i'm not talking about those cases the majority of cases are unwanted pregnancies because people want to be sexually active without the responsibility of god's mandate to be fruitful and replenish the earth and and i quote that scripture again malachi 2:15 and did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one, that he may seek a godly seed. That's the purpose. So next time, in the next episode, we're going to continue by talking about some of the, the dangers of sexual immorality, some of the things that it causes. Yes, and then we'll talk about how to escape the debt trap. Oh, oh, I said the debt trap. I meant the sex trap, but shortly it is a debt trap. Yeah, it is a debt trap. And how to escape the sex trap that's taking over. 
Um, is it all about sex? Yeah, it's all about sex. It's about the rejection of God. It's about the rejection of the image of God and man. It's sexual idolatry. All right. I thank you for joining again in this episode of Arrows of Revival. And I want you to stay tuned for part two. Part two will be released on Thursday. You'll hear part two of uh, sexual idolatry. So that's on Thursday. You'll hear part two of sexual idolatry uh, this week. And uh, there's more to say on this topic. Really, I appeal to every believer, every Christian that is hearing this and Christian leaders that the church has to ensure that we draw a clear line, a clear line regarding sex. We cannot be lenient. We cannot give place to it. We have to, we cannot give any tolerance to it. We got to draw a clear line in every area, in the unwarranted divorces, you know, large number of remarriages and treating marriage as if it's just a, a casual thing that you could just dismiss anytime you please and then just get remarried uh, in homosexual activity, uh, in adultery and premarital sex. It, you know, nowadays, some churches, pastors do not want to talk about premarital sex, do not want to talk about fornication. That's very prevalent. Many young people think that it's just an okay, normal, casual thing to do. But as a church, we must draw a clear line. Be careful of sexual idolatry. Do not let it take your heart. And be ready to use the word of God to pull down the stronghold wherever you are. So uh, join again Thursday. You'll get the next part of this, the next part of this uh, sexual idolatry. The Thursday, you'll get the next part of this. And again, this is Bishop Reed here in this episode of Arrows of Revival. Uh, remember, you can email at hello at revivalarrows.com. Again, that's hello at revivalarrows.com. Welcome you to send in your questions, any kind of question you have. You want to hear more about this topic. Uh, I, I received an email with the teaching on how to interpret the Bible for personal study. Uh, saying they want more, more on this topic. Uh, if you want more on any particular topic or you have any question, please feel free. Send in your questions. Send in any topic that you may want to be dealt with to hello at revivalarrows.com. God bless you. And tune in again next time to Arrows of Revival. Thank you for listening to Arrows of Revival. To hear other episodes, go to RevivalArrows.com. Again, our website is RevivalArrows.com. To contact us, email hello at RevivalArrows.com. Send us an email to hello at RevivalArrows.com. And remember, let God shape you and polish you as an arrow for his revival.